today's video is all about identifying the difference between a main clause and a subordinate clause. A few children have asked me to do this one, so make sure that you uh, listen carefully and have a go at some of the questions at the end. And if you find it helpful, make sure that you like and recommend this to your friends. Okay, so what is a main clause? So the main clause is a sentence that has both a verb and a subject, and it should make sense completely on its own. So for example, Miss Quinn ran for 30 seconds. So seconds, minutes, seconds is more like it. Uh, so the subject in that sentence is Miss Quinn because it is the thing that the sentence is about. And the verb, the action, is that I ran for 30 minutes, so ran is the verb. So that there is a main clause, it makes complete sense on its own. The cinema was crowded, the subject of the sentence is the cinema, it is the thing that we are talking about, and the verb in this sentence is was, it was crowded. And the last sentence, the class were practising their times tables, the subject, the thing that the sentence is about is the class, and the verb is were practising, they were practising their times tables. So like I said, a main clause is part of the sentence that makes sense on its own. So, what is a subordinate clause then? So, a subordinate clause is part of the sentence that depends on the main clause, so that means it relies on it. If it didn't have the main clause, it would not make sense on its own. And the second thing to remember is that it must begin with a subordinating conjunction. So, I've got two here. Before they had their lunch and because it's getting dark. Now, neither of those two make sense as sentences on their own. If I added it, however, to a main clause, the sentence would then start to make much more sense. So, for example... We've now got the sentences up on the screen. Miss Deakin and Miss Quinn went on one last ride before they had their lunch. So, remember, before they had their lunch, the subordinate clause did not make sense on its own without the main clause. And the main clause is Miss Deakin and Miss Quinn went on one last ride. Um, and added together, it makes one expanded sentence, one compound sentence with more information. And my subordinating conjunction is before. If you look at the bottom of the screen now, you've got all of your subordinating conjunctions up there. We remember it as I saw a wabub. Um, it just gives it's a fun little way of remembering the different subordinate con subordinating conjunctions. The second sentence, it's time to go back inside because it's getting dark. The main clause, the part that would make sense on its own, is it's time to go back inside. Even if it didn't have that subordinating conjunction and clause, that bit would make sense on its own. What we've done by adding a subordinate clause because it's getting dark is we've just provided more detail in the sentence. Also, just remember to put your comma before your subordinating conjunction. So if you look at the word before and because, before both of those words, there is a comma. Okay, so here are some for you to have a go at on your own. So I've given you three main clauses, three sentences that would make sense on their own if we just kept them as short, simple sentences. However, I've popped a comma there because I would like you to have a go at adding some of your own subordinate clauses. Remember, they must begin with one of the subordinating conjunctions below. It might be that more than one of those would work in your additional information. You just need to choose the one that sounds the best. Good luck, guys. So pause the screen, have a go, and once you've done that, if you press play, there's another task for you to have a go at a little bit later on. Okay, so here we go, next part then. What I would like you to do at this one is I would like you to identify which parts of the sentences are the main clause and which are the subordinate. Now, don't fall into the trap of thinking that the subordinate clause is always the bit at the end of the sentence. The key thing I would remind you to do now is to identify where the subordinating conjunction is in each sentence. Once you've found the subordinating conjunction, it will help you identify which part is the subordinate clause. So pause the screen, have a go, maybe write out the sentences so that you can actually underline them and identify which part is which. And then once you've had a go, if you unfreeze, we'll then go through the answers together. Good luck, guys. Okay, so here are the answers then. 
Miss Quinn decided to go home, that is the main part of the clause, because that would make sense on its own as a short sentence. The additional information is, since she'd been out of the house all day, since is the subordinate conjunct subordinating conjunction, you can see that because it's in your list down below. So that bit in the blue box there is the subordinate clause. In the second sentence, um, Miss... Sorry, after a long day of working, the children took a well-deserved break. Now, this is the one where the subordinate clause is actually at the beginning of the sentence because the subordinating conjunction is after. After a long day working, that's the additional information. If I put a full stop at the end of that, it wouldn't make sense as a sentence on its own. However, the children took a well-deserved break would make sense as a sentence on its own, so that is the main clause. And in sentence number three... Miss Stringfellow was planning her lessons until her laptop died. So the main clause there is Miss Stringfellow was planning her lessons. It starts with the subject um, and the verb in there was planning. And then the additional information, the subordinate clause, is until her laptop dies because it begins with the subordinating conjunction, until. Okay, so let's have a look at some SATS questions to do with main and subordinate clauses. So this is one of the ones that's come up in the past where they've given you some sentences and it has asked you to identify whether what has been ticked is the main clause or the subordinate clause. So let's have a go. If you want to have a go at doing this one on your own first, if you pause the screen now and then you play and we'll go through the answers. If you just want to see me go through it, then just continue to listen. Okay, so sentence number one. As he was the tallest, Jake opened the window blinds. Now, for the bit that's been underlined is the beginning bit, as he was the tallest. Now, in that bit, we're looking for the subordinating conjunction. So we can see that in that sentence, the subordinating conjunction is as, which means as he was the tallest is the subordinate clause. Because if we removed that from the sentence, Jake opened the window blinds, still makes sense as a main clause, as a sentence on its own. So the first one is a subordinate clause. The second one, the resplendent eagle soared across the sun-stained sky before diving towards the earth below. So the resplendent eagle soared across the sunset sky. That bit there, if we put a full stop at the end, would make sense as a sentence on its own. So that means it is the main clause, the part that has not been underlined before diving towards the earth, begins with a subordinating conjunction, which is before. So that bit there is the subordinate clause that has not been underlined. In the second sentence, Maggie arrived at school on time, despite sleeping through her alarm. Again, look for that subordinating conjunction. So that subordinating conjunction is despite. Um, so it is actually the subordinate clause that's underlined here. Maggie arrived at school on time would make sense as a short sentence on its own. And in the next one, the leopard, who had slept all day in the shade, roused itself and prepared to hunt. Now this one here is a relative clause. That bit in the middle that has been underlined is still the additional information. If we removed that entire bit, the sentence would say, the leopard roused itself and prepared to hunt. That bit makes sense on its own, so it is the main clause. The only difference here is that the subordinate clause has been added into the middle of the sentence as opposed to at the beginning or at the end. So the part of that sentence that's been underlined is the subordinating clause. Okay guys, so the last question for us to have a look at is add a subordinate clause to the sentence below. Remember to punctuate your sentence accurately. So you can choose uh, three different ways of doing this. So you could put your subordinate clause at the beginning of the sentence, you could put it within the sentence, or you could put it at the end of the sentence. Remember that the clause that you add in has got to begin with a subordinate conjunction. If you cannot remember what they are, if you pause the video and go back to a bit earlier on, they were at the bottom of the screen. So as long as your subordinate clause has got that within it, you should do absolutely fine with your own sentences. So well done today, guys. Thank you for coming back and looking at them again. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and a like and share it with all of your friends. Let's get this out. Let's help lots of children with their work at home at the minute. There's no point in letting anybody suffer. So if you can share this with as many friends as you can, I would be forever grateful. Well done, guys. This ain't okay.